Welcome to Living in God's Best with Pastors Carl and Belinda Benton. Many people in our society today have concerns that affect the very foundation of their lives. Concerns about family, health, the economy, and the growing pressures all around us. Whatever you're facing, God's Word has real, relevant, and timely solutions for your specific challenges. So, sit back, relax, and get ready to receive an infusion of God's Word today. <laughs> Let me start this over again. <laughs> okay, if anybody was putting that on Facebook, just just eliminate the first one. <laughs> I tell you, there are so many emotions wrapped up in me right now because of the message, and (laughs) it's going to be good. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. How many of you enjoy a mystery? A good mystery. A mystery book. I didn't read much when I was young, but the, the few books I read were mystery books. They would hold my attention. Glory to God. And what is it about a mystery? There's things that are hidden. There are things that are secretive. There are things that are going to be revealed with clues. Amen. Pieces of a puzzle are going to come together when the clues all come together. But the greatest mystery book... And I didn't realize that this was a mystery book. How many of you know this is a mystery book? Amen. Anybody? If you know it's a mystery book, raise your hand. If you didn't know, don't raise your hand if you didn't know. Okay, I just want to know who knows that this is a mystery. (laughs) All right. Glory to God. This book is a divine secret. It's knowledge that's withheld, but only for a time. Only for a time and and with a reason. And it can only be made known through divine revelation. And only to those who are illumined, illuminated by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. So this book is a mystery. And I never realized how many times in this word he talks about this mystery. This book is a mystery. Um, in 1 Colossians 1.27, it says, There is a mystery that has been hidden from the ages. Hallelujah. From ages and from generations. But now it has been revealed to the saints. It was a mystery, but it's no longer a mystery. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Or is it still a mystery to you? (laughs) Hallelujah. But it has been revealed. Now it has been revealed to the saints. And this is the mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory. This book is a mystery of the glory of God. It is a mystery that tells us, actually, in 1 Corinthians 2, 7, and 8, it's a mystery that was hidden that none of the rulers of this age knew because if they knew about this mystery, guess what? They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. But it says, Christ in you. Who is Christ? It's Jesus, the living word, and his spirit, the spirit of power, love, the spirit of glory. Christ encompasses those two things. It's not just the word, it's the word and the spirit of God. The word of God and the glory, the spirit of glory on the inside of you is going to be your hope. We say Jesus, the only hope for the world. Christ and his spirit living on the inside of you is going to be your confident expectation of receiving and living in the glory of God. What is the glory of God? 
I have asked the, the Lord for years because the assignment he gave me over 10 years ago that I am to preach the goodness of God and prepare people for the glory. Yes. I could preach on the goodness of God. And I can tell you what the word of God says about the glory. But if we don't act on it, we won't see it. Amen. Amen. And so the glory is so important to the Father that he wants every man, every woman, every child to live in the glory. To have the glory of God with them. Amen. It is so precious. The glory is the presence and the power of the living God manifested in us and through us and around us. But the glory of God also has this brilliance, this light. Said Jesus, he said the word of life became the light of men. And no, nothing could overcome the light. You understand that? Nothing can overcome the light. Yes, the word of God says in Isaiah 60, it says that that the darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness the people. Timothy tells us that um, in the last days there will be perilous times. Men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure, boastful, arrogant, blasphemers, loving the pleasures of this life more than loving God. Hallelujah. And he also says that the Spirit of God says explicitly in the latter times that some will begin to heed deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. And they will depart from the faith. Which means if they depart from the faith, they once had the faith. I don't know how many churches still preach the word of God in power and the spirit of God. And keep the Holy Spirit in the church and in the services. I was reading on just one of these little news clips on my um, telephone. And it said that there is... Um, this is the dean or the president of a seminary who happened to be a lady and says she does not believe in Jesus Christ. She does not believe in the resurrection. She, believe, she is pro-abortion. She is for uh, same-sex marriages. You see what happens. There's some good news in the word that God tells us for a reason to keep us walking in the glory. Amen. Because the good news is his words and his words are life. And their life and their even health to those that find them. His word is good news. But then there's the deceiver who comes with the fake news. And why is it fake? Because it's a mixture of stuff. They've started to redefine what love is. What life is. What marriage is. They're trying to redefine all kinds of things. But you can't change the word of God. You can't. But you have to be filled with the spirit of God. So you won't get caught up in the deception that's coming. If you think it's bad now, it says darkness will cover the earth. And gross darkness, deep darkness, the people. The good news is, you don't have to be one of those people. Amen? Hallelujah. Turn in your Bibles to Isaiah 60. Hallelujah. You don't have to be those in the darkness. Because that's not your calling. You have a different calling. Amen? Yes. And when we walk in our calling, we're going to see in Isaiah 60 what's going to happen. It says, arise, shine. Get up, stand up, 
take your position. Rise up out of oppression. Rise up out of depression. Rise up out of complacency. Rise up out of lukewarmness. Just rise up. Come on now. Well, it's time for the church of God to rise and shine yes. with the glory of God. And you know what? It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen <laughs> upon you. Woo! Now that's something to shout about. It is risen. It's upon us. And the glory is something that can be seen by other people. Hallelujah. Because then it says, For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. I got a mixture of stuff going on in me today. I tell you, I've just been with the Lord, and there's so much I want to say. And I'm just going to say it like he says it, okay? I've asked him to put a guard at my mouth, keep me from saying anything I shouldn't say, but I said also give me the freedom to speak what the Holy Spirit is telling me. <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. And then guess what's going to happen? The Gentiles, those unborn again people, shall come to your light. Ha! They will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Whew. Are we rising? We have to ask ourselves. Maybe you're there. Maybe you're way up here and you're so, you full of the glory. Hallelujah. And people are coming and, 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 and being touched by the glory around you. I'm on the path. I cannot say I'm there. But I'm, I want to be. Amen. I have a want to be. I have a desire in my heart to be everything that God's called me to be because he needs every light. Yes. He needs the light. Look what he said in John 17 before he left. Oh, glory to God. John chapter 17. Hallelujah. He prays for himself. Then he prays for his disciples. And then he prays for all those who will believe. Amen. Yes. But look at verse 4. Chapter 17, verse 4. I have, he's speaking to the Father. He said, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world began. See, when he came to earth, he wasn't coming as God, although he was still God. But he laid aside his robe of glory, and he took upon the flesh of a man. And it says how God, how the Father, anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Because he had laid that aside. So he came and everything he's doing, he's becoming our example for what we need to do. He went, he was, he went for John the Baptist to baptize him in the water. And John looks at him and he says, what do you mean? No, you should be baptizing me. He said, no, we need to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, he's setting an, an example here of what human men will have to do to regain the glory that was lost. And we'll get there in a minute. And so, he wants every man to be filled with the glory. And when he came up out of the water, what happened? The Spirit yeah. of God came upon him like a dove. The power, the Spirit of glory came upon him. And then he goes into the desert full of the Holy Ghost. You're going to face some deserts in your life. There's going to be some dry places and some wilderness and some hard times. But if you go through it with the help of the Holy Ghost, you will do just that. Yes. You will go through it. Yes. It will not tear you down. It will not destroy you. 
it will lift you up and make you stronger. That's right. Hallelujah. And so there's a great secret in here that God, for a purpose, kept it hidden from the rulers of this age. It says if they had known the mystery that we're going to talk about, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. Because what happens? The word of God said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. Right? All by itself. One little grain of wheat. But if it falls and dies, then it can germinate and it can produce a harvest of many, many more just like the seed that went into the ground. Amen. You want to know who the seed is? Hallelujah. There is, if you, let's turn in our Bibles to Genesis 3. Hallelujah. God is a God of glory. He created Adam and Eve in his image and his likeness. He is spirit and his likeness is holiness and righteousness. So when he created the first man, Adam and Eve, they were like, they were like their father. They were holy. They were righteous. But there was also something else about them. They were crowned with glory and honor. The word of God tells us in, uh, in Psalms chapter 4 verse 8. It says, what is man that you are mindful of him? Hallelujah. Let's go there. Just You can hold your place. I want you to see this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's Psalm 8, verse 4. Glory, glory, glory. Let's start at verse 3. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? What is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. God visits man. He would come in the garden in the cool of the day and they had face-to-face, one-on-one fellowship with the Father. And the Son of Man that you visit him, for you have made him a little lower than Elohim. The Bible says angels, but we have not been made lower than angels. That word Elohim is the triune God, the Father, the Son, the Spirit. He's made us a little lower than God. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. Hallelujah. What is this crown that we are crowned with? It's the presence and the power and the light of God. Which gives us revelation and understanding of everything that's in this mystery book. So it's no longer a mystery to us. Amen. But I looked up that definition. And that crown is something that marks you with honor. A crown marks someone with honor. It's the highest state or quality of anything. It's to finish and mark. To impart beauty and splendor. And God said, it's not just a little crown that we see that was put on Adam and Eve's head. They didn't walk around with this little crown. No, it was his manifested presence and his power and his brightness and his light. And it was around them. See, a crown is round. <laughs> I don't think a square crown would fit our heads with it. <laughs> So he said the presence, it wasn't just this little thing here. It was, it was here. And it followed them everywhere they went. It surrounded them. And, and they had the glory all around them. Which is one reason they didn't know they were naked. Because there's a scripture in Psalms where, it's Jesus, where Jesus, where God says, And he clothed himself with light. If God could clothe himself with light, he could clothe his, his son and daughter with light, couldn't he? And so that light signifies, so it also said that it imparts beauty and it, it shows regal and imperial power. Now the devil always wanted the power. 
which is why he fell from heaven because he wanted to be lift his throne above he wanted to be like the most high he wanted to sit on the mount of God the congregation he was just deceived who in their right mind could think they could ever be more beautiful, more loving, more kind, greater than God. But he actually convinced a third of the angels. And when you consider there were myriads of myriads and hundreds of thousands and thousands and thousands. And he convinced one third to follow him. There are a lot, a lot of people in the world. But I'm telling you there's a great majority that are being convinced to follow deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons because it's easy and it feels good. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So God crowned his man with glory and honor. And he had fellowship with them. And in that, in that glory, they had power to rule and reign in the earth. Amen. So here's this being who fell. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Can you imagine hundreds and thousands of angels falling to earth after they had been in this glorious home in heaven? And God said he put fire in the midst of him and he turned to ashes. His beautiful body that was every beautiful stone and instruments where we believe he was the praise leader of heaven. What a wonderful job. And yet it wasn't enough for him. He wanted more. His pride caused him to fall. Pride goes before a fall. Hallelujah. And so he fell, and so now he doesn't have a particular body. His beautiful body's gone, but there's this serpent in the garden where he sees this man and woman with this glory, this power of God all over them. And he can't hardly stand it because that's what he wants, the power. So he knows what made him fall. Pride. And... Uh, he caused others to fall as well. And you know what the word of God says? You know, if he can get them to sin, it says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. So if he can get them to disobey the word of God and to listen to his word, which is sin, he knows he will fall. He will lose the, his authority and guess who's going to get it? for a season, for a time. But he don't care. He just wants it. He's going he's gonna to take it and he takes it by deception and the word of God says Eve was deceived but Adam was not. I believe if Adam, Adam hadn't go, gone along and been influenced by someone who was deceived who happened to be the only other person there, his wife, if he had not eaten I believe the whole world would be different today. But God is a God of love. He loves us so much. He said God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he knew when he would create Adam and Eve, he knew in weakness they would sin. They would miss it. But he loved them so much he was ready to forgive them, send a savior, redeem them, so the glory could come back. Said Jesus returned many sons to glory. And so if you're still in Genesis 3. <laughs> all of this happened. And they found themselves naked. They, dis they disobeyed the word of God. And what follows blessings? I mean what follows obedience? I gave you the answer. Blessings. What follows disobedience? Curses. And so after all this takes place in verse 14, there's going to be a curse pronounced upon the serpent, a curse upon the woman, and a curse upon the man. But I want you to see the curse upon the woman. Hallelujah. Because in here becomes a clue. In here it starts to develop a mystery. God's going to paint a picture. He's going to put... 
puzzle pieces together, but until all the pieces come together, you won't have the full picture. Hallelujah. But he's going to start showing little clues and little pieces of the puzzle of this mystery of the glory. And so it says in 14, here's God speaking to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be cursed more than all the cattle, more than every beast of the field on your belly. You shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put in enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. Thank you for joining us on Living in God's Best. Living Glory Church is located on 200 East Butcher Switch Road in Lafayette, Louisiana. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Saturday evening at 6 p.m., and Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. To find out more about our services and children's and youth ministries, visit thelivingglory.org. That's thelivingglory.org. Remember, it's the truth you know and walk in that sets you free. Living Glory Church, touching hearts, restoring hope, healing lives.